ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंद ज्ञानंजन शलाकय चक्षुर्मी तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे here we are seeing some of the very important characteristic of lord shiva as a pure devotee of the lord one of the very important lessons which lord shiva teaches to the devotees is that of detachment from material enjoyment in spiritual life <clears throat> if we are not detached from material enjoyment we will not be able to progress further propa gives the example just like the marriage party which is rowing the boat whole night and if the boat is not removed from the anchor however you may try the boat will not move forward because there is a anchor to the boat similarly material attachment is our anchor to this world until we become detached from this world we cannot move forward in spiritual life so this material detachment is exemplified in the character of lord shiva he is showing with his example of course material detachment means when we have something which we considers to be our own to be detached from that this like prabhupad gives an example suppose one crazy man comes he tells everybody look this bank of india from tomorrow i am renouncing so people will say you are crazy this bank never belong to you where is the question of renouncing when you have something then when you renounce that is different when we don't have anything what is there to renounce so lord shiva he is teaching by his example he has everything he is almost on the level of lord vishnu in opulence but we don't find that he has a palatial vaikuntha loka where does he reside in kailash who are his who are his people who whom he is surrounded with not with some great assembly of people who are worshiping him he is always surrounded by ghosts pisachas so in spite of having having everything lord shiva exemplifies the example of material detachment so prabhupada is saying lord shiva teaches the sincere devotees how to become detached from materialistic way of life 
so this is one very important point which we shall try to understand in today's class here we find something which is uh, looks like to be very contrary the description of lord shiva which it is given here is very interesting it is said here yasya anvadya acharitam manishinaha gananti manishinaha means great thinkers great sages great souls mahatmas they are called as manishinaha gananti means they follow what do the great sages they follow they follow yasya of lord shiva anvadya acharitam acharitam means character they follow the character of lord shiva which is anvadya anvadya means unimpeachable meaning completely trustworthy you cannot challenge his character if you see from external he look like what is he you are calling him to be some great devotee always surrounded with one snake surrounded with ghostly people isn't it dressed in some ash that is his ornament isn't it so externals may look like something we may start doubting we may start challenging isn't it but bhagavatam says his character is unquestionable unchallengeable see it cannot be criticized so what do the great sage follow they follow this character of lord shiva his unimpeachable character they follow what is that character exemplify that is his greatness of being a great devotee of the lord and what is the characteristic of greatness in devotional service it is to be compassionate on jeevas chetana mahaprabhu says jeeve doya the most important sara of essence of religion is to be compassionate on living entities so lord shiva he is one of the greatest devotees of the lord in fact it is said vaishnavanam yatha shambhu as great as a vaishnava like lord shiva actually he is such a great devotee of the lord exemplified devotee of the lord so what do these great sages follow manishinaha grananti what do they follow they follow his unimpeachable character what is that unimpeachable character what is the characteristic of his character that is explained avidya patalam vibhitsavaha in a, the avidya which is present so grossly the avidya which is present in such a big mass in the material world vibhit savaha means he wants to dismantle lord shiva has taken a work to dismantle the mass of avidya in this material world that's a very great characteristic suppose i'll give you an example suppose there is a group of people hundreds of people are sitting in the temple this sometimes we see even even among the devotees 
even when we have become devotees we like to do the services which are of higher nature which has some respectability in the community of devotee right we try to choose even among devotional service those kinds of services which are easy to perform those services which are respectable those services which will be acknowledged by people generally we will not be ready suppose there are lots of services allotment and there is a service of singing will be very happy yes but why would like to sing there is a service of preaching we will also be happy there there is service of uh, you know some management that also we would like to do there is a service of cleaning toilet very difficult <laughs> then it hardly very few people will come forward so even among services we find we like to do services which are acknowledged by people services which are of you know which are recognized by people which gives us a kind of a uh, name or fame recognition such things now you can see the example here lord shiva has taken in charge of preaching to the people who are in tamoguna lord krishna has taken in charge of people who are in satvaguna brahma ji has taken in charge of people who are in passion and lord shiva is taken in charge of people who are the most down trodden neglected by the lord bhutas and pishachas practically the people in demoniac species of life they rot in that life krishna is saying in bhagavad gita ye sham tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmana te dvand moha nirmuktam bhajante maam dridavrata who worship the supreme lord dridavrata those whose sinful life is over so where is the question of sinful life being over for people who are bhutas and pishachas most sinful people there that's why they have got this horrible body somebody having the body of bhutas or pishachas or devil or asuras these bodies are given to the most sinful living entities so lord shiva is so kind he is saying my dear lord i will take charge of these people who are neglected by you. such people i will try gradually to push them towards krishna consciousness that's why lord shiva is considered to be one of the greatest devotees of the lord that for such people who otherwise have no way to come to spiritual life he has taken in charge of them one of the names of lord shiva is bhutanatha prabhupad explains bhuta means there are two meanings of bhuta in sanskrit one is ghostly character another is dull headed so even for dull headed people he has taken in charge even when he came as shankara he took in charge of these dull headed people you see the dull headed people who what they had started they had started killing animals so then the lord came as buddha and then they neglected the vedas so to bring them back to the vedas such dull headed people who had given up the vedas to them the lord appeared as shankaracharya such misguided people the lord wanted to even give mercy to them in the form of shankaracharya of course such misguided people became more misguided <laughs> they did not understand the real purpose of shankaracharya but at least they accepted brahman as satya from voidism they came to nirvishesha that there is something called impersonal brahman so one step ahead they were able to come so this is the greatness of lord shiva so a very 
interesting in this verse it is explained that although his im- unimpeachable character is followed by great sages they don't follow his acharana his character is followed but nobody will be able to follow that i will remain like a bhuta among the bhutas among the pishachas i will remain and then i will try to bring them back to godhead but yes his way we may not be able to imitate but his character we can follow the character is to dismantle the mass of ignorance that we can try to follow it is his greatness we cannot do just like i was giving the example the other day that gor kishor das baba ji maharaj he can sit in toilet and he can chant the holy name so what we can take from him is that we can we should chant the holy name of the lord always not that we should also think i will finish my 16 rounds in toilet <laughs> isn't it that will not be possible so for great personality we cannot imitate them we can follow in their footsteps we can follow the teachings given by them their character we should not imitate their activities that may not be possible for us prabhupad gives the example that is given in bhagavatam about lord shiva why one should, one should not follow so the example is given lord shiva is so great he can drink poison and still he can be worshiping the lord we cannot imitate him so he can remain with ghostly people and he can be still unaffected by that he is in charge of mode of ignorance still he is unaffected he is in charge through durga durga is wife of lord shiva what is this material world it is durga only you see and we are all building palatial building skyscraper building so lord shiva can easily build a big palace the whole world actually belongs to him in that sense because that is belonging to the wife this is durga material world material nature but he is so renounced he does not engage her in building a big palace even though so many devotees of lord shiva they all go to him and they want to become rich they want to become powerful in this material world they want to get material wealth we see the example of ravana all these people they are worshiping him for what to get material opulence but he is teaching his sincere devotees detachment lesson of detachment that i may have everything but still i am showing except for using it in service of the lord we should be detached so prabhu pad is saying lord shiva's uncivilized devilish characteristics are never abominable because he teaches the sincere devotees of the lord how to practice detachment from material enjoyment so yasya anvadya acharitam manishino gananti avidya patalam vibhitsavah the great sages the great thinkers the great souls they follow in the footsteps they follow the character of lord shiva to destroy the mass of ignorance of people nirasta samya atishaya api yat swayam even though in the material world no one is equal to him in the material world even brahma is not equal to him in that sense in the material world no one is equal to him no one is greater than him in the material world in spite of that pishachacharyam acharat gati sata so this is the paradox what is the paradox that even though in the material world he is in the most superior position but still he remains like a devil pishacha charyam he engages in pishacha charyam activities of devil people he engages in <clears throat> why he engages there is a great reason behind it 
the reason is gati satam satam means devotees so to give them a proper destination to such fallen souls to make them to bring them back to godhead prabhupad translates although no one in the material world is equal to or greater than lord shiva and although his unimpeachable character is followed by great souls to dismantle the mass of nishains he nevertheless remains as if devil to give salvation to all devotees of the lord so what is the gist we should take out of this that we may have everything at our expense because of prabhu pada's greatness his movement money is there everything is there now we should not think this is all meant for me to eat and sleep that is very very important today's class today's conversation anybody remembers prabhu pada is in the conversation what does prabhu pada say hmm Yes. Very good. Prabhupada explained in today's conversation that why a devotee is interested in building a big temple. Devotee is not interested in building a big temple for himself. Prabhupada is saying, but that is happening. Devotees are misutilizing, thinking now comfortable life. I can sleep and eat nicely. and not work hard no that is not the idea prabhupada is saying for devotees they don't require a big temple like that but one is people will utilize their wealth for women and wine for all these sinful purposes they will utilize their money so what do the devotee do he does a favor to them somehow or other <coughs> he takes that money from them and he utilizes that in the service of the lord by building a big temple <clears throat> and the temple is a chance for people to come and hear the glories of the lord that is the meaning of the temple so prabhu pad is saying here this is the example we should take from lord shiva <clears throat> everything is available with him he is in the most superior position in the material world but he is not misutilizing that position he is not misutilizing that opulence which he is having he is showing better to be detached so prabhupada is saying lord shiva even though this is the this is the contradiction shown that actually the more a person becomes powerful the more he becomes materially attached you can see the example of uh, hiranakashipu why his name itself is hiranakashipu the moment he has power hiranya means gold kashipu means soft bed comfortable life that is demoniac life so the more a person becomes powerful in this material world the more he wants to enjoy it, the more he becomes materially attached so what is the gist we can take from lord shiva is even though everything is available with him he is not constructing some huge house for himself you see durga is his own wife he is living in he is living in crematorium forget about at least a hut small hut he could have built he is not even living in a hut he is living under trees he is living in crematorium he has taken that position to teach the lesson of detachment <laughs> and why has he taken to such a work because these are the people for whom nobody may care the people in the mode of tamoguna in the mode of ignorance ghostly people sinful people so that is the character we should try to follow compassion upon the living entities <clears throat> so prabhupada is saying here that even though he is called mahadeva mahadeva means greatest of the demigods you see all others are called deva they are all called demigods he is called greatest mahadeva greatest of the demigod he is called mahadeva or greatest of all demigod 
no one is equal to or greater than him in the material world. <coughs> he is almost equal with Lord Vishnu. Although, and then Prabhupada is saying, although he associates with Maya or Durga, he is associating with Parvati or Durga own wife. He is above the reactionary stage of three modes of material nature. He is not touched by them. He is above the three modes. Although he is in charge of devilish character, and although he is in charge of them, he has taken himself in that mode. He is not affected by such association. Even though he associates with Bhutas, with Pretas, Pishachas, all such kind of sinful people, he doesn't become affected by them. <clears throat> so that is the greatness of a great devotee. And in the last class also we were seeing Prabhupada explaining that he is such a great devotee of the Lord that when when food is offered to the Lord and when we partake, it is called prasadam. But when the same food is first eaten, after it becomes prasadam, when it is taken by great devotee like Lord Shiva, it becomes Mahaprasadam. So, when the same food is taken by the spiritual master or a pure devotee like Lord Shiva, and then when we part it, it is called Mahaprasadam. So, this is what we can understand from today's class. We will stop with this. Grantra Srimad Bhagavatam Kitten, Srila Prabhupada Kitten.